Good evening and welcome to Walt Buccaneta High School for tonight's matchup between the St. Mary's Rough Riders and the Walt Buccaneta Redskins. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Mark Schein. And Mark, we're going to have a near capacity gymnasium, but for good reason, because there's rivalries and there's Walt Buck St. Mary's. Yeah, these two schools are so close in proximity right here uh, along the lake in here. This is going to be a really good matchup for that reason. But also, each team has one league loss. You don't want to have two league losses in your first two games and have a chance to win a league championship. So this is going to be a very competitive basketball game. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game first for the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Okay, they've got great size. Their bigs are, are you know, their talent of their team is their bigs inside. Parks is 6'11", Turner's 6'7", Anksman's 6'6". They need to control the interior, get on the glass, not give up any easy shots inside, and score on the interior as well. And then because Wapak shoots the ball so well, run them off the three-point line. Don't let them get feet set. Don't let them have an opportunity to shoot easy baskets out there and score a lot of points from the three-point line. And then finally, it's probably going to be a, a low-scoring game. Each possession is going to count. Don't have any empty open, empty possessions. There's a lot of attention to what St. Mary's brings to the floor. What does Walpock have to do tonight? Well, because they shoot the ball well, that 19-foot, 9-inch line where the three-point line is at, that's very important to Walpock. They shoot a lot of threes. They make a lot of threes. They've got a high percentage there. And they will have to do that because it's going to be tough for them to score on the interior. But the second thing is they need to compete down inside, get some offensive rebounds, make it difficult for the St. Mary's big kids to score and compete inside and make them really work there. And then it's going to be a possession by possession game. So same thing. If you have 12 possessions a quarter, you can't turn the ball over three times and expect to win the basketball game when you get that many turnovers. We have a big WBL matchup for you tonight, and it's rivalry basketball on top of that. When we return, we'll have starters and opening tip on WBL OSN. Welcome back to Walbuckinetta High School. We are just about underway as the starters for tonight's game are being introduced. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Walpock and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. We are going to take a look at tonight's starters. Uh, first of the St. Mary's Rough Riders are going to be coached by Dan Hageman. One and two record, 0 and one in the WBL. And they are going to start number 24, Evan Anksman. Number 11, Braden Sullivan. Number 35, Austin Parks. Number five, Coben Owens. And number 22, Jace Turner. For the Wolfpack and Redskins, they are led by coach Dr Trey Elkert. They are two and three, 0 and one in the Western Buckeye League. And tonight, they are going to start number five, Nate Metzger. Number 20, Cash Shaddle. Number 30, Deacon Rutterer. Number three, Zach Niekamp. And number 14, Jackson Porter. Tonight's officials, Nick Swink, Randy Prince, and Mike Magoo. So, Mark, we were talking in the pregame. You know, there's nothing better than a rivalry basketball. And I can't, I'm hard pressed to find a rivalry that is bigger than these two schools. It doesn't matter what time of year, what sport, who's playing. The, the community's come out, the gym is jam packed. It is an electric atmosphere, you know, for a middle of December basketball game. Yeah, it really is. And it's what's typical. It is exactly what you would expect when you get these particular programs together. And again, uh, in any particular sport, St. Mary's comes in averaging 67 points a game. They give up 60. Wapakoneta averages 38.6. They give up 46.2. So a little bit difference in style of how they like to play, but this will probably be a pretty low-scoring game. St. Mary's last weekend picked up their first conference loss as they ran into a tough Defiance Bulldog team. A lot of experience on that team, and it caused St. Mary's some issues as the opening tip is up, and it will be controlled by St. Mary's. Walpock also with the one WBL league loss. So as you mentioned, these teams looking up at most likely, I think a lot of people believe it'll be Ottawa Glandorf and Defiance. His first three-pointer is off, rebound comes down to Defiance, but Austin Parks right there swats it away. And we're gonna see that mismatch. Every time Austin Parks is on the floor, there's a mismatch. Well, it's what they had right there is that, you know, they had what they wanted. And Wapak did, they got the shot from the perimeter, they got a good check out inside, but then turned it over to Parks. And because Park was right there, stayed with it, and they kept it. Three-pointer on its way by Sullivan, and good. St. Mary's opens the scoring there on top, 3-0. How about that, a team with all the size that they have have come out the first two shots are from the three-point line. 
And St. Mary's, that was one of the things that they really struggled with against Defiance. They couldn't quite find their range from behind the arc, and that allowed that defense really to be able to kind of sag in and key on Austin and make that offense a little bit more uh, difficult to get going. If they can get that three-point shot going, they are very, very difficult to handle. Each of these teams have a loss. The team's picked to be at the top of the conference and almost a turnover. Sullivan getting on the floor, yeah. scramble for the loose ball, and we are going to have a tie-up. Ottawa Glandorf defeated Wapak last week, and as you said, Defiance defeated St. Mary's. So uh, those two teams have kind of staked themselves out early on as being at the top of the conference, and these two teams are both chasing them. Possession A.R.O. favored the Redskins, so they're able to keep the basketball. As here in the early going, St. Mary's defense has caused a little bit of problem. They have. This man-to-man -man has been very good so far, and it will have to be because if it's not, the Redskins will be very, very patient with what they do offensively, and they will dictate the pace of the game then. Now Walpock, as you mentioned, being patient in this possession, just moving the basketball around the perimeter, not trying to force anything inside, trying to see if they can't get a mismatch. And almost throw that one away. Looked like it might have been tipped. Rochelle trying to get rid of it, has to dump it off, able to find it. His teammate, Niekamp, gathered it back in. His Angsman was right there, almost able to take it away. And Niekamp has this one blocked. Parks gets the block, brings it up the floor. And that's why you can go out and pressure as much as you would like because once, if you can get beat, then there are big shot blockers inside and they're three. Three-pointer on its way by Owens. This one's off. Offensive rebound came down to Sullivan. Some miscommunication that time by Sullivan and Owens. Ends up out of bounds. Basketball's going to go back to the Redskins. Zach Niekamp bringing the basketball up for Walpock tonight. Has Shadle has made 10. There's a steal. Hanksman with those long arms, able just to go in and poke that one away. Takes it all the way in and puts it down for two. Kind of cruised in with that one-handed dunk. The defensive pressure outstanding for the team wearing blue right now. Now quarter, working against Sullivan. Sullivan gets a little aggressive on the reach in. He's and I don't think that, foul. I was watching Coach Hagemeyer. I don't think he minded that foul call at all. He's so happy with how hard his team was playing defensively. He'll take a foul like that occasionally. So that foul on Sullivan, his first, team's first. As you take a look at the Cook and Son replay, Ang's been coming all the way in for the big dunk. And that is Cash Shadow able to come up with a two-point answer as Walpock is on the scoreboard. That's an offensive rebound basket, and they will take all of those they can get. Sullivan gets it back over to Owens. Owens has a lot of space, going to move it around with the right hand under the basket of defensive miscue that time as Owens, I think, was even surprised with how open he was under the basket. Yeah, the two guys went to one player, left him wide open to go to the goal. Now quarter. Sullivan's defensive pressure on the perimeter. Outstanding right now. He's trying to use that sideline as an extra defender that time. Quarter was fortunate to be able to keep that possession. And down low, you saw Nate Metzger working against Austin Parks. You ends know, up going out of bounds. Basketball's going to go back to St. Mary's. A lot of coaches don't want you to give up baseline defensively, but St. Mary's right there. They let them go baseline. And then there's Parks, and you got a 6-11 double team and nowhere to throw the basketball. Now Owens tries to drive one more time. Gets into the middle of the lane, able to put that one up for two. 9-3, to three, St. Mary's on top. As right now, the offense is getting all sorts of good looks. Quarter. He's going to try to drive. Jump stops, has to kick it back out. Three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be off. Rebound ends up in the hands of Angsman. Evan Angsman dumps it off to Parks. Parks left all alone on the side of the basket, and he throws it down. And we are going to have a timeout on the floor as Walpock's going to want to talk about it. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Night's Instant Replay. It's brought to you by Cook & Son Plumbing & Heating, specializing in old-time services since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. And we will take a look at the Cook & Son Replay here and check out that last basket by Parks. Good transition basket. Draw the defender to you at the free throw line and get the ball to the big fella for the flush. 
Walpock wanted to take a timeout as St. Mary's offense has come out firing at all cylinders. They find themselves down here early, 11 to three. Parks comes right over the side that time, able to take that one away. He's gonna look to push the pace, pulls it back out, gets it to Angsman, and the offense will get reset. Redskins have turned the ball over four times in four minutes. See Sullivan lobs it over to Angsman now. Angsman's gonna drive, spins, almost loses the handle, able to gather it back in, gets it out to Owens. Thought Owens was gonna shoot it there for a second, but now it's Parks. Owens drives, gets into the contact, and gets the and one. Owen Owens with his sixth point of the quarter, and he's going to make a trip to the free throw line. The passing for St. Mary's in this last three or four possessions has been outstanding. Watch the pass right here from Parks. And then the strength to finish at the rim and go to the free throw line. That foul was called on number 13, Grant Bauer. He had checked into the game during the last stoppage. His first, team second, as we see Coben Owens step to the free throw line. Free throw is up and good. St. Mary's extends their lead out to double digits as it is 14 to three. 340 left to go here in the opening quarter. Defensive pressure from the Rough Riders continuing to cause some issues for the Redskins. Porter gets it over to Bowers, looking for the screen, decides to go baseline. The help came quickly as Jaden Lotz came over to cut him off, able to get it back out, but Porter not able to connect on the three-pointer. Same scenario, you go baseline and you get trapped down there. They did get a good three-point look at it. Here's Owen with the head fake, gets rid of it back to Angsman in the corner. Angsman steps back, shoots the three, can't get that one to go. Parks with the offensive rebound. He's going to go up and gets it. Austin Parks with his fourth point of the quarter, showing why he's so good around the rim that time, was able to get up, put that offensive uh, basket back up without much of a challenge. Defensive rebound was actually in pretty good position, but Parks with his length was able to secure the basketball without fouling. Here's Bauer up at the top. Decides to go the other way into the lane. Hesitation, head fake, gets up. Can't get it to go down, but Grant Bauer will make a trip to the free throw line. Good move for Bauer to make something go into the goal where he would draw contact. And as you can see in the Cook and Son replay, he got down low, had a couple of St. Mary's defenders as we have some more substitutions coming into the game for St. Mary's number one, Noah Payne checks in. And we're for Wapak number 23, Ryan Sadler coming into the game for the first time. And Jackson Quarter returning to the game. A couple of much needed free throws there by Wapak. And what do we got? Oh, they were trying to get a sub in the game. That's what happened. As Grant Bauer is going to check out number 10, Caleb Moyer coming into the game for the first time tonight. 2.26 left to go here in the opening quarter. Well, or excuse me, St. Mary's on top, 16 to five. And they have the basketball. Coben Owens brings it up for the Rough Riders. He's had a nice first quarter. Here's Owens to the free throw line, kicks it back out. You know Angsman will shoot it. He passes off to Lotz. Lotz, he's gonna shoot the three pointer. That one's no good. Rebound down to Walpaw. Trying to move quickly here, nice seal that time. As you saw Moyer able to get to the right side of the basket. The offensive rebound by Ryan Sadler is up. And now the Walpock offense is coming alive here, trying to close this gap. Second time they've been able to score on an offensive rebound. We're gonna have a turnover. Basketball is gonna go back to the Redskins. First. So it took a little bit to get Walpaw going, <laughs> yeah, but they seem to have woken up here in this first quarter. You know, we saw this a week ago. They struggled early on against Ottawa Glendorf up at the Supreme Court. And then they kind of righted the ship for a while. It's kind of what they've done now, but they've dug themselves quite a hole. That was the first turnover in the opening quarter for St. Mary's. Now here's Moore. 
As Walpaw's going to settle down into the offense, trying to see if they can't solve. As they had found something on that left side, we've seen, I think that's three straight possessions now. They've been able to get to the left side of the lane and get good looks at the basket. That one's going to be no good. The rebound comes down to St. Mary's. Parks. Up at the top of the key, has to get rid of it. Three-point shot on its way for Owens. Coben Owens continuing to have a monster first quarter. St. Mary's uh, two for six from the arc. Here's Metzger as we are under a minute left to play here in the opening quarter. Walpark trying to keep this one close. Or you're looking for someone to go with the basketball, but Owens not giving them a lot of space. Metzger almost loses that one, but they will gather it back in. He's going to drive, cut off by Parks, has to kick that one out. Moyer has this one taken away. Good defense by Turner. Owens, no one comes out to mark him. He's going to fire another three. That one's off. 18 seconds left to go. Walpock, I'd imagine, is going to hold for the last shot here of the quarter. Going to try to get a good look. They've had some success getting to the basket and getting close range, just not able to finish a couple of those. Five seconds to go. And Turner is going to be fouled as he went to drive. Owens is going to get whistled for the foul and pick up his first. That is the team's third foul. As Zach Niekamp comes back into the game for Walpaw. Metzger on the inbound, gets it to quarter. Quarter with the leaning jumper at the buzzer as Walpock able to make this a 10-point game. After one, though, St. Mary's is on top, 19-9. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Welcome back to Walpock and High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Mark Shine. And Mark, that St. Mary's offense seemed to not be able to do anything wrong those first five, six minutes of that first quarter. Walpock finally started to find a little bit of rhythm, though, as that quarter came to a close. Well, they did. St. Mary's is six for six from the two-point range. Two of seven from the arc, made one of one free throws. Wapak, three of eight, 0 for two. They've made all of their free throws tonight. So the rebounding actually favors Wapak six to five, and they have two offensive rebounds in that number. But Wapak turns it over five times to just once for the Rough Riders. St. Mary's will begin this quarter with the basketball. Both teams not in foul trouble yet. St. Mary's with three team fouls. Wapak with just two. Plus a 2-3 zone now from the Redskins. A different look. Seems like it's kind of livening the defense up a little bit. It seems like Walpock moving a little bit quicker. Nice turnaround in the lane, though. That one doesn't go as Turner can't connect. That's a really nice jump hook in the lane. Just rolled out on him. Kneecamp thought about the three for a second. Decides to give it off to Metzger. Sadler working against Park. He's going to drive other side. Tried to spit one by Austin Parks, but Parks got enough of the basketball, and Sullivan's going to move it up the floor. Just underway here in the second quarter. Parks thought about driving that time, but decided to pull it back out. Sullivan launches a three-pointer. That one goes. Sullivan now with a three-pointer made in each of the first two quarters as St. Mary's is on top, 22-9. Braden Sullivan has made nine three-point field goals coming into tonight in their first three games, and that, that is his range right now. Average is 10.7 a game. Double team came over as Park came on that backside help, was able to take that one away. Tries to feed Engsman down low. Engsman gives it back to him, and an easy dunk that time for Austin Parks. Nice give and go situation. Cross court pass a couple of times. Two teammates working really well together. Just like the start of the first quarter, St. Mary's offense gets out on a run. It's going to be up to Walpock to see if they can find some answers. Metzger working at the free throw line, trying to dribble out of trouble as Parks is going to come out to guard him.
Metzger trying to direct some traffic, get guys in positions. Almost had that one taken away. Quarter going to pull up from the three-point line. That one's off the back of the iron, comes down to Parks. Under six left to go here in the first half as Owen brings it up for the Rough Riders. You can see they start in the odd guard zone, and on the first pass it becomes a 2-3. Turner tries to feed Parks down low. That one gets knocked away, and it is going to go back to the Redskins. Just a second turnover tonight. Tried to get the lob inside to Parks, and the ball goes out of bounds. Grant Bauer checking back into the game for the Redskins. Quarter has made seven threes this year. Shadle's made ten. Zach Decamp has made six. See if they can get somebody loose. They're 0 for 3 from the arc right now are the Wapak Red Redskins. Tried to drive baseline to Metzger, but cut, cut off nicely by Turner. And even if he thought he could get by him, Parks was right behind him. Fortunate to be able to find somebody, pass out of that situation. And right now, the Walpock offense is just a little out of sorts. So they can't find much of an opening. Kneecamp tries to fire another three-pointer. That one's going to be no good. Long rebound out to Sullivan. Sullivan with the stutter step layup, and it's good. But Bauer is down on the other side of the floor. He has that knee brace, and that's the knee he's grabbing at. So we will step aside as they attend to him, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's three-point sponsors, Elite Drain Cleaning and Water Damage Professionals. Make Elite Drain Cleaning and Water Damage Professionals your first call when you need water extraction. Help with clogged drains or carpet and upholstery cleaning. Find Elite Drains on Facebook. So Grant Bauer was able to... Um, uh, get off the floor, excuse me. He's going to be attended to by the medical staff. Hope that he is okay, but we are back underway here. And Kneecamp throws that one away as he thought Moyer was going to cut. Moyer stood still. That one ended up out of bounds, and it's another Redskin turnover. Seventh turnover. Trying to go back door against pressure and then just not communicating very well, and there's the turnover. Good defense. They're going to go back man to man. Hanksman now, he's going to back the defender down, gets all the way to the basket, off the front of the rim, gets his rebound. Second one doesn't go, puts up another shot. That one's no good. Moyer comes up with the rebound. Walpock looking for a spark on offense. Here goes Kneecamp with a three-point shot and good. We saw him do that last week against Ottawa Glandorf. Shot his team back into the game in the third quarter. Let's see what happens here. And now we'll see if that can, they can translate some of that energy to the defensive end as they need a stop. Turner gets it on the inside, kicks it back out. As Walpock goes to this man-to-man -man with Parks on the bench. Angsman left all alone. He shoots a nice shot, and that one goes down. Tried to score inside the last time. Had a lot of contact. Got off balance a little bit. This time he steps out to the three-point line. Buries a three-point jumper. That's his third one of the year. Oh, nice and he steal. just picks his pocket on that one. Angsman's going to go all the way in and throws down another one. Well, that, that was a textbook steal. Coaches talk about keeping that low hand and coming up with, for the basketball so you don't come down and foul across the wrist. That was really well done. Of course, the dunk to finish it. You know, that's one of the things that you don't hear a lot talked about. If we have another whistle, we're going to have a foul. I believe this one's going to go on lots. If you can stay on balance so you don't get beat and then flick it the ball upwards like he did right there, that, that was a really nice job defensively. Well, it, you know, what I was going to say was, you know, a lot of times what people don't talk about, too, is the length of players. Right here, As you look see, at that. That arm, yep. he just goes out that wide wingspan to his. He's able to keep it from having to wrap out, just pokes that one away, and the anticipation to go back and grab it, just a great defensive play. So that shot was no good. Jaden Lotz comes up with the rebound. Three minutes left to go here in the first half. St. Mary's on top. But Walpock looking to see if they can't get some stops here defensively towards the end of the half. Austin Parks has come back into the game. And they are trying to mark him right now with two different Redskins. Showing good patience right now are the Rough Riders. There they go. They find Parks inside. Nice play by Austin Parks. Size and position 
led to two more points. Started him at the top of the circle so that when the ball was passed to the corner, he could just flash down to the box. Good pass, good catch, good finish. Jackson Quarter's going to try to drive. He spins back, tries to get a little bit of room. Nice up and under, but there was Parks. And that time, with the rejection, came some contact as Austin Parks is going to pick up his first foul. Yeah, came down across his arm that time. He, the coach would have preferred he stay more straight up. But instead, he came down that time, gets called for the foul. And actually, up on the scoreboard, they called that on Jaden Lotz. Whoa. Okay. So they are going to say that right. was on Jaden. That is his second. So Austin will remain foul free for the time being. As Quarter is able to make his first free throw. Second one is up and good. Two, 210 left to go here in the first half. As Owens is going to walk it up for the Rough Riders. Here's that zone that starts odd guard and then it becomes a 2-3. And that zone is what Defiance had success with against the St. Mary's team. As St. Mary's was not able to uh, make uh, some three-point shots. But Austin Parks that time does not worry about it. Comes up with another offensive rebound and gets the put back for two more. Decamp going to try to fire another three from the other side. And Zach Decamp now has two three-pointers here in this quarter. And we're going to have a 30-second timeout. So we will keep it here as well. And, you know, Mark, you know, you've been around basketball a long time and all sorts of different aspects of it. It's a rivalry game. We know that. Walpock's got themselves a hole. How do you start to dig yourself out of this? Well, it's going to be really, really hard because I think St. Mary's is playing at a very high level tonight. That Their defense is outstanding. If there's somebody does get beat, the help side is excellent, and they're rebounding the basketball. And then on the offensive end, they're just shooting the basketball so well. They're so fluid and patient. I, I think that St. Mary's is playing at a very high level. Can, can Wapak can come out and press some and turn the pace of the game up and, and, and try to make it more of a, of a 94 foot game? Uh, perhaps, but I think it's going to be a real uphill struggle right now for the, the home team because of how well the visitors are playing. So coming out of the timeout, St. Mary's will have the basketball. And as you see, some full court yep. pressure coming from the Redskins. Didn't trap, but they tried to up tempo it a little bit. And stayed man to man in the half court. Here's Turner. Moves it around the perimeter. Ends up in the hands of Owens. They're going to feed Park down low. Great move on the inside as Austin Park levitates and throws it down to get the and one. That was a really good footwork play. Everybody's going to look up high and see how he went up and exploded and dunked and drew the foul. But his footwork, watch this, ball fake, and then go baseline with a power move. That was a really, really good job footwork-wise as well as the strength to score and go to the free throw line. Average is 25.5 and shoots 88% from the free throw line. Deacon Redderer picks up that foul, his second of the night, as Austin Parks is not able to connect on the free throw. 37-17, a minute 10 left to go here in the half. Moyer. Going to try to see if he can get some offense going for his team, but Anksman almost comes up with another steal. Moyer tracks it down, gets wrapped up, but there's going to be a whistle as Anksman that time getting a little too aggressive trying to get the basketball is going to get whistled for the foul. Just the sixth team foul. So Anksman picks up his first foul of the night. And Wampak will get to inbound from the sideline. A minute one left to go. Quarter. Going to look to drive. Gets cut off by Anksman. Back around the free throw line. Has to pass it back out. Knee camp. Nice move on the inside. Kicks to an open man in the corner. That one's going to be off, though. Ryan Sadler had a good look at it, but just a little bit too much on it. And now St. Mary's will have an opportunity to see if they want to hold for the last shot of the half. Turner on the inside, spin move, right-handed hook shot, no good. Quarter comes up with the rebound. Jackson Quarter's going to let everybody get set up. 15 seconds left to go in the half. 
Going to try to see if they can't get a good look at this one, get some points heading into the locker room. Hands it off to Kneecamp. He's had a nice quarter, two three-point shots, but loses the handle on that. Long three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be off, going to go out of bounds. And that will bring the first half to a close. Here in Wapak, so far, it's been all St. Mary's as they are on top, 37-17. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back to Wapak and High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Mark Shine. And Mark, first half of the story is St. Mary's. They couldn't do no wrong. They shot 59% from the floor. They were 12 of 17 from the two-point range and 4 of 10 from the arc. On the other side, Wapak, 29%, 3 of 9 from inside the arc and 2 of 8 from outside. Wapak turned it over eight times. St. Mary's only turned the basketball over twice in the entire first half. The rebounding went to St. Mary's 12 to 9. Well, when Coach Hagemeyer sent us his information this week, he said, I want to limit turnovers, attack the rim, and put out great effort. He's three for three in his, his pregame, what he wanted to accomplish this evening. It seemed like St. Mary's was able to do just about anything they wanted on both sides of the floor. We'll see what kind of adjustments Walpaw can make. They're going to begin this third quarter with the basketball. And they had a backdoor opportunity there, but that length of St. Mary's continues to give them problems. Hand off to quarter, quarter for three. That one's going to be no good. Loose ball, and it's going to go back to the Rough Riders. Really good offensive set. And while we have a moment, Nate, this is only week number three, but the leader in the clubhouse for best pet band, Wapak Canetta. Those people are good. Steve Winters is a director, and they have entertained this crowd here before the game and at halftime. They are really good. They are. They have sounded great all night long. Hank's been on the run out, finds Turner down low, waits for defenders to fly by, can't get it to go, but gets his own rebound. Second opportunity doesn't go down either. He's going to be unhappy with himself. He had a couple of point blanks and just couldn't finish. Quarter almost loses that one as Sullivan's trying to rip it away. Got it out to Kneecamp, but Kneecamp took his eyes off the basketball for just a second, and that was enough as it went through his hands. And it's going to be another Redskin turnover. Yeah, he was already figuring out where the pass was going to go when he secured the basketball. And as you said, he didn't secure it. He watched his eyes and left the ball. So Hanksman is going to take it out for the Rough Riders as they are find themselves with a large lead here to open the third quarter. St. Mary's with great balance. Quarter scores of 19 and 18. Four players uh, have scored 10, 12, 8, and 7, so great balance there. They've got four guys. If they keep this up, will be in double figures. It's been a really good half for them, and we're going to travel. That time, Hanksman was trying to find Parks down low. But got off his feet just a little bit, and came back down with the basketball still. So. A fortunate break for Walpaw because they're going to get it back. Now, of course, the thing is, you're St. Mary's. You look at the clock at halftime, you're up 20. And can you match the intensity and skill level that you played with here in this quarter, having that type of lead? He can't almost lo loses that one. Gather it back in, and he finds Metzger down low for two. Good pass and a good finish. And now you see that pressure stepping up from Walpaw. Trying to see if they can't get some extra possession. St. Mary's able to handle it, and they're going to bring it up into the front court. Hanksman, he's going to drive, goes through some defenders, gets it off the right side, and goes down for two more. Evan Hanksman having a good game tonight, as that is his ninth point. Just took the ball all the way across the lane, and, and as solid as Wapak usually is defensively, I don't think Coach Elker was happy with no help coming that time with as many dribbles as they took. Shadow able to pull that one down before leaving his feet as the defender from St. Mary's was flying over. And knee camp, he lets one go from three. That one's no good. Anksman with the rebound. Pretty good look that time. And in fact, looked like he had good offensive rebound position inside, but Anksman just came and swooped in and grabbed it. Now Parks gets down to Anksman on the wing. He's going to drive. And we're looking for a little pick and roll that time. Walpock does a nice job defensively to cut it off. Sullivan kicks it back out. Turner with the shot. That one's going to rim in and out. Going to have a loose ball foul. Looks like this one's going to go against Parks. Sometimes having that kind of size can work against you. I think that's what it was there. He's just long, and as he's trying to get some position, 
He got whistle for the hook. I thought he lost his balance a little bit, and perhaps that was the reason why the contact occurred as well. That was a pick and pop, went to 17 feet for the jump shot, just missed it. So Parks picks up his first foul. You see Niekamp lets the shot go. That one's going to rattle around, no good. That was a really good look. They ran a screen for him off the baseline. He got a good look at 17, but that just rolled out on him. Bounced off the rim. Here's Turner. Finds Park down low. Park's going to go to the left side, gets it to go. There is not a defense when he gets the ball down that low and that deep. He already set up on the block, and then they went high low to him. So Austin Parks having another big night offensively, but we've also seen him get the job done on the defensive side of things. He kept trying to drive, just cannot get through that defense. But here's Metzger. He goes baseline, has to throw this one away because he was going out of bounds, and it's going to be a turnover by Walpaw. Mary's is really good. If you go baseline, they are really good at getting people down there to help. Hence the turnover that time. Now Owens, dribble down into the corner, has to pack, pack it, pass it back up. Excuse me. This one goes to Parks. Parks once again on the left side, can't get it to go, but Turner on the follow gets it to go off the glass. Says Jace Turner has his first basket of the night. See, there you go. You play pretty good defense on, on Parks, making him take a bit of an awkward shot, but then you don't secure the rebound. And defense, there's the steal. Owens comes up with the steal. He's going to go all the way in against Metzger. Gets that one to go for two more. 11th turnover, third of the quarter. And those live ball turnovers end up run outs the other way. Neve Kemp again trying to drive right into the teeth of that St. Mary's defense. And we're going to have a whistle. I believe they're going to call Anksman on this one. That is Evan Anksman's second foul as you check out the Cook and Son instant replay. As Anksman just drove him or rode with him all the way down into the lane, not letting him get a look, but a little too aggressive on that tie up. As you saw Parks also come over there and take a swipe at the basketball. Warrior well, looking for somewhere to go with it, has to throw it long. There's Shadow trying to work through some traffic, has to get rid of it. Right now, as it has been most all night long, Walpark just having a hard time finding some space in this St. Mary's defense. Lobs it down low, but here comes Owen, takes that one away. As Coben Owens is going to come up with the basketball for St. Mary's. Played that really, really well. Came from about the foul line area down, anticipating the pass. Ryan Sadler tried to come over, take that one away. He's going to get called for the foul on the contact. That is going to be Sadler's, I believe that is his first of the night, and it is. It's the team's first of the half. So Hank's been on the inbounds, gets it off to Turner. Turner working down low, trying to once that basketball back. Hanksman decides to go up top with it. Now here's Park. He's going to feed Turner. Turner, turnaround jumper, one-hander goes. They just exchanged positions on the floor that time. Parks went to the free throw line area. Turner posted up inside. St. Mary's continues to open up this lead as Owens comes flying in for that rejection. Owen Owens is having a great he game. He really is, isn't he? He's controlled things offensively, made a lot of good decisions there. His defense has been outstanding as well. Turner kicks this one out. Parks thought about that three-pointer for a second, took a step inside the arc and gets that one to go. A really nice one dribble move for the big fella. 16 points on the night for Austin Parks as Moyer's going to travel in. Can't get this shot to go, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line. Parks was going to go up and, and just pin that against the board with both hands. <laughs> Foul call and still get to go to the free throw line with Moyer. Look at this. Didn't really have to move, just went high. Was going to try to meet Moyer up there and high point that, but the whistle came before that as Anksman actually gets whistled for his third foul. So Evan Anksman with three fouls. He's going to stay on the floor for right now. As Moyer not able to connect on the first free throw. Second free throw is good. 
Well, Pacanez, a 70% free throw shooting team on the season. And they're six of seven tonight, so that's been one of the bright spots for them. Jaden Lotz checked back in the game for St. Mary's. Hands it off to Sullivan. And St. Mary's continues to have great ball movement tonight. Two minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Lotz gets it over to Anksman now as St. Mary's being deliberate with this offensive possession, showing good patience. Three Redskin defenders came over and they were trying to do something, trying to get that ball away from Austin Parks, but Moyer got a little too much contact on that one, so he's going to pick up a foul. That is his first of the night. Right idea by Moyer. He was spinning into him, so he came down and tried to slap, slap the ball loose, but came across his arm. Under two left to play here in this third quarter. St. Mary's offense. So far, has been able to just about everything at once. That time, all the attention went to Parks down low, and he found Turner behind the arc. And Jace Turner, he has his seventh point of the quarter. And his first three-point field goal of the season on a really nice offensive set that time. On the previous possession, Parks down screened. Freed up, turned to free throw line, took the pass, and he kicked it right back out to his buddy for the three-point shot. Very well executed. So Ryan Sadler that time went into attack mode and went right at Evan Anksman. Gets the call, so Evan Anksman now with four fouls. Imagine he's going to take a seat for a little while, if not the rest of this game with four fouls. St. Mary's does not play on the Saturday night. They will be back in action at New Bremen on Monday night, one of those makeup games from New Bremen's football state championship run. And then we will see the uh, St. Mary's Rough Riders next week, and they go to Marion Local next Thursday night, a game that will air on WOSN on Friday next week. And that will be two of the tallest teams in West Central Ohio matching up against each other next Thursday night. Kick it was. Hey, I'm gonna get to touch the ball. Basketball ends up over here in the broadcast area. Gonna stay with St. Mary's. See Noah Payne as he came in to take Evan Anksman's spot during that last stoppage. He's gonna inbound it. Gets it down to Parks. Parks trying to find a cutting line. It's not too much on that pass. Loose ball. We're gonna have a tie-up and a jump ball with the possession arrow favoring the Rough Riders. Wapakoneta has Olin Tangi on a Saturday night and the next Wednesday, the yearly matchup with Liberty Benton. That will be a 5 o'clock JV start next Wednesday. Then both teams will be heading to Christmas break. Can you believe that? Somebody put Christmas Eve on a Saturday during high school basketball. <laughs> ah, they were not looking ahead at the calendar. Plan ahead, we you? It's high school basketball. Some things are just important. So under a minute left to go here in the third quarter. St. Mary's in control. Turner, he's going to take another one from three. Yeah. Gets that one to go as Jace Turner having a big quarter after being held scoreless in the first half. He comes out, and he has 10. I've seen that movie before. Pass the ball down to the low post. Leave him alone to the th three-point line. It's 33 points. We're headed towards running clock, maybe in quarter number four. Austin Parks went up, get that rebound, gets it down to Payne. Payne back out to Lodz. Ten seconds to go. Lodz going to use the screen, gets it back to Parks. Parks going to drive, goes right through that defense. And we are going to have another foul. We'll see who they call this one on. As there were a couple of Walpaw defenders down there. There's your 35 points right there. Just still had enough to muscle it up and get the ball to fall. This will only be the third free throw they've shot all evening. And still haven't seen who they whistled that foul on as it hasn't come up on the scoreboard. There's, there's two different defenders down there. I yeah. think they could have got either one of them with it as Payne gets a shot off at the buzzer and no good. So after three, St. Mary's in control. They're on top 57-22. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's Instant Replay is brought to you by Cook & Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. Welcome back to Walpaw Canetta High School. Nate Garlock alongside Mark Shine as we are just about underway here in the fourth quarter. St. Mary's, you know, Mark, I saw them just a week ago, and this is a very different-looking team than I saw just seven days ago. Yeah, it is. If you think of the fact that Austin Parks did not play week one because of an injury, so last weekend was really his first weekend of action, and then how well they have come together this week, and they have played very, very well this evening. Been very impressed with them tonight on both sides of the floor, seeing the offense come alive. as It's come from just about everybody as yeah. well. We've seen Coben Owens really got the scoring going and really got the offense flowing in that first quarter. You know, Austin Parks obviously has done what he has done. Jace Turner in that third quarter came alive. They've really spread out the scoring, and everybody has contributed tonight. Really good weapons. They've only turned the ball over three times in three quarters, and they're shooting 61% from the floor. That's a nice move. Nice turnaround shot that time by Jackson Quarter. He's able to get that one to go as he makes a trip to the free throw line. Of course, the other part of that, and they, we talked about at halftime, is their balance. They've had quarter scores of 19, 18, and 20. So they have just been uh, just smoothly operating this evening. As quarter free throw is no good, Park's able to track it down, tried to save it, but got knocked back out by Nate Metzger. I've been very impressed with the St. Mary's defense as well tonight. When you look at the quarter scores of Walpock and what they've been able to do, you know, they have really shut them down, not giving them a lot of avenues, whether it be in transition, in half-court sets. Walpock has really had to work tonight to get anything to go down. And, you know, that St. Mary's defense, they have kept the energy from the opening whistle. That is absolutely correct. Wapak's had quarter scores of 9, 8, and 5. So the defense has improved as the basketball game has gone along. Walpock got a turnover that last possession. Coming down, though, St. Mary's uh, was able to poke that one away. Possession is, will stay with the Redskins, though. You see Owens and Angsman coming back into the game. So Metzger on the inbounds gets it to Kneecamp. Kneecamp's going to try to work it around a couple of different defenders. Thought about going inside, but had to pass that one back out. As Logan Crow is checked into the game for Walpock. Of course, this is a St. Mary's team that a year ago just got better and better as the year went along. Ended up going all the way to the regional finals a year ago and finishing at 18 and 8. We had a great tournament run a year ago. Quarter on the drive, kicks it to Crow. Crow's shot is up. That one's no good. It's going to be tipped around and finally gathered in by St. Mary's. Turner lets the traffic go by, ends up into the hands of Owens. Owens working against Moyer. That's St. Mary's is very much still in their offense. Angsman at the basket, doesn't go, gets the put back up, doesn't get it to go down, but he's going to go to the free throw line. Eighth offensive rebound in the game for St. Mary's. May not seem like a, like a large number, but when you consider they've shot about 60% from the field, there haven't been a lot of offensive rebounds to go get. And that whistle was on Zach Niekamp, his first foul of the night. The St. Mary's teams that usually shoots the ball well from the free throw line, they are just 104 tonight. So 4.30 left to go in the game. Hank's been at the free throw line. Second one is up, and this one is good. Of course, we will stay in the running clock. It's at 34 points now. If it goes below 30, the running clock comes to an end. The Walpock still trying to get things going down low, but that defense of St. Mary's, it is still tough. We are going to have a whistle. I think you call it a five-second count, I think. Closely guarded. So the basketball goes back to the Rough Riders. And Sullivan... Waits to get the ball so he can inbound it. Walpock continuing to put pressure, and that's going to lead to a turnover. Moyer able to gather it in. Kicks it out to Kneecamp. Kneecamp finds Crow in the corner. His shot, that's going to be off. Moyer comes up with the offensive rebound, though. Nice job with the extra pass. 
as Noah Payne gets the rejection, but couldn't go straight up. Came back down into the body, so he's going to get whistled for the foul. That's going to be Payne's first uh, foul of the night. Six footer goes up high right here, but as you said, body contact. That is the 17th foul for St. Mary's, so Walpock will go to the free throw line. As you see number 11, Logan Healy at the free throw line for Walpock. Wasn't able to connect on his first one. Keith Dillsaver wears number two, checks in for St. Mary's. Second free throw is good for Healy. Walpock also has a couple other substitutions. Number four, Crew Allen has come into the game for the Redskins. Hank's been down low. And that time, Healy just in bad position as they were able to get Hank's been going towards the basket. He puts it in, gets the contact. Going to go back to the free throw line. Really nice job of the lob pass down to the low post and then the, the physical presence to go up and score through contact and go to the free throw line. A couple more substitutions for the Redskins. Number 24, Ryan Richardson coming into the game, as does number 12, Caden Page. St. Mary's substitution, number 13, Alex Haney coming into the game. So both schools going to the bench now. And I'll tell you, Mark, St. Mary's, if you know, they everybody knows that they're going to be, you know, a problem matchup wise. You're not going to have a lot of teams that can come in and match up with the size of St. Mary's. But even if you can, with the way that they played tonight and they get the play out of their guards that they did, it, yeah. I, it's going to be hard to matter. They, they are. When, when their guard play can be this solid, they don't turn the basketball over and make three point field goals when given the opportunity. Plus, their defensive pressure their guards are able to put on because they know they've got big help behind them. This, this team is really starting to gel right now. So, obviously, a long way to go in the season, a long way in the WBL race as well. But some big key matchups coming as you move through that schedule. As the WBL, especially the top part of it, is going to be very fun to watch. Three-pointer on its way. Alex Haney comes up with the three-pointer as he comes in off the bench. There's 7 of 13 from the arc now for the game. And he averages four points a game. That's his first made three-point field goal of the season. A little bit too much on the reach that time by Heath Gilsaver as he had come into the game during the last stoppage. It's going to be his so first. Team foul eight. We should be at the line. There's going go. to be a one-on-one. -on -one. The officials are whistling if, if, it. If we don't hurry this up, the game's going to come to an end before they get the free throw shot. And that is probably what is going to happen with under 30 seconds left to go in the running clock. We may get one free throw off here. Healy lines up the shot. It is up, and that one's no good. Rebound down to St. Mary's. And St. Mary's, they made the trip down the road, and they come in to Walpock, and they're going to come away with a big conference victory as they are going to win 63-25. to Mark, you know, coming in, you know, you're – you're not sure what kind of game you're going to get, especially in these big rivalry games. St. Mary's left nothing to chance. That's absolutely true. They came out from the very opening whistle, got the tip. They went and scored. They played so well so early, and then they just maintained it throughout the game, and they never gave the Redskins a chance to unload against them. So we will step aside when we come back. We will have tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on WSN. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're rejoined by Coach Hagemeyer. And Coach, congratulations on the win tonight. You have to be happy with both ends of the floor. The offense got off to a great start. The defense came up big for you tonight. Well, the way we defended last weekend, we needed to improve. And that's what we talked about with, with our guys all week. We spent a lot of time on it. Uh, just talking to them, we have good enough athletes to be able to do that. And uh, I was really pleased with what we did tonight. You know, uh, you had a big uh, game last week in the WBL, another one tonight. The WBL is going to be a grinder. You know that. You've been through it time and time again. What's it mean to get off, get these early wins to try to set you up for that conference run? Again, after last weekend, we lost two of them, and it just feels good to get a win. It feels good for our kids to feel good about them themselves, and uh, we'll be ready to go. Monday night again when we go again. All right, Coach, we don't want to keep you. Congratulations, a big win for the team. We appreciate the time. Okay, thank you. 
being joined by Mark Schein. And, and Mark, you know, you heard Coach say it, you know, a big win, especially they had a rough weekend last weekend. But to come here tonight, be able to put the kind of show that they put on and get a big win tonight means a lot. They, they did, and, and they dominated the game from the very beginning. They did so defensively. Then they got scoring from everybody. Their guard play was very good this evening. And we know that their size is very important for them inside. But when they get play from their guards like they did tonight, they're going to be very difficult to beat. And speaking of the guards, we'll look at tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner. Check out the highlights of tonight's winner on our WOSN YouTube page. And we talked a little bit off air, Coben Owens, what he was able to do tonight, especially coming out, got the offense rolling, a very deserving win tonight. He was a really solid player. And it's easy to get overlooked sometimes because the size looks so impressive and they do so many things when they dunk the basketball and do things like that. But he was kind of the key to that. He got some, a couple good baskets early, and his defensive pressure out front was exceptional early on in the basketball game. They only turned it over a handful of times tonight when your point guard handles the ball that well, and he already turned it over all. It was a really good effort for him this evening. Absolutely. The entire St. Mary's team came up huge tonight. A great win as they get rolling on the WBL uh, conference play. They got a couple of big games coming up, but, you know, this is really kind of helps reset the stage for them. What we talked about there in the fourth quarter, they go to New Bremen, and then they go to Marion Local, and two good Mac schools. New Bremen just playing their first game of the year tonight. Marion Local is just getting started, but Marion Local has huge size. There will be a lot of very big bodies on the floor next Thursday night, so a couple of really good non-conference games heading into the Christmas break for the, the uh, St. Mary's Rough Riders. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Walpaw Canetta High School. I'd like to thank everybody behind the scenes, out in the truck, working the cameras. You guys do a great job, as always. We appreciate everything you do. One final time, St. Mary's comes into Walpaw. They come away with a big victory. For Mark Shine, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.